This week on Full Circle Florida, battleground ballot, abortion, marijuana, and the six reasons you should vote. Purple gain, does the abortion and marijuana vote put Florida in play for the Democrats? Why, it's not that simple. Florida's brain drain, massive amounts of teachers leaving public schools. Investigative journalist Katie LeGrone obtaining the exit interviews, and they are revealing what's driving the teacher mass exodus in their own words. Plus, Israel, Iran, and the house of unfinished business. ABC's Rick Klein is here with sharp new insight on the biggest developments of the week. Welcome to Full Circle Florida. If you've ever done an exit interview after leaving a job, you know there are two ways to play it. Safe and say nothing, or don't hold back and say everything. As Florida teachers are leaving public schools in alarming numbers, this week, investigative journalist Katie Legrone gave us unique insight into the raw feelings behind the mass exodus. While you likely won't find a teacher who says money is what drew them into the classroom, in Florida, it's a top reason driving them out. I loved my job. Unfortunately, I was unable to pay all of my bills on my salary. As a nine-year teacher with the district, my salary is slightly above a first-year teacher, which I find demoralizing. These are comments from more than 650 exit interviews since 2023 with Florida teachers from Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, and Palm Beach County who chose to leave their jobs in the classroom. While about a third cited moving and relocation as a major reason, nearly a quarter of exiting teachers listed salary at the top. A teacher in Pinellas added, I couldn't afford to be a teacher anymore. I have worked three jobs since I started and I was burnt out. These first-hand sentiments we obtained through a public records request following our investigation in January that found last school year more than 18,000 teachers left their school districts. That's nearly 10% of the state's publicly employed teachers at the time. In Hillsborough County, the district lost just over 9% of its teaching staff last year alone, with nearly half of those who participated in an exit survey rating their salary on a one-to-five scale a dismal one. Brutally honest is good. It's a positive in that. Dr. Charmian Patton is HR manager for Hillsborough County Schools, where the district still has nearly 400 teacher vacancies. And last year's exit interviews revealed teachers not just leaving the job, but the industry. Overall, it wasn't disheartening. It actually was enlightening and it made me say, I'm glad that we know what we can focus on so that way we can make it better. Though last year's teacher exits was slightly lower than the record high resignations a year prior, they represent the ongoing struggle to recruit and retain teachers in a state where salaries still rank among the lowest nationwide, qualifications are lowered, and classrooms remain active battlegrounds for politically driven agendas. And according to these teacher exit interviews, it's getting old. A veteran teacher summed it up like this. You should know many teachers are leaving due to insufficient pay and overbearing statewide legislation that is making teaching in not just Hillsborough County, but in Florida, a daunting experience. Well, a middle school teacher in Palm Beach County left stating this about politics and education. It currently feels as though teachers are being hung out to dry in response to Governor DeSantis's transparent efforts to persecute educators in order to create sound bites for his future run for president. But also driving educators away, a lack of parent accountability and student respect. Dozens of teachers from both coasts describe student behavior that's, quote, out of control. A teacher in Tampa. There has been a decrease in disciplinary action, but a dramatic increase in extreme behavioral issues. Another in Palm Beach. There are students with multiple infractions that are allowed to remain on campuses there. They sow discord and often make it harder for other students to learn. And this one comes from an elementary school educator in Pinellas County who left this year, just three weeks after starting. The absolutely ridiculous and violent behavior of the students, coupled with little to no consequences for said behavior, was abhorrent. In less than three weeks in this position, I hated every minute of the day. It was negative and I couldn't wait to leave each day. Hey, Kenny, joining us now in the studio. Uh, do we know yet how this is impacting students? Is, is there any measurable correlation between these teacher vacancies and student performance? Because if you're a parent right now with a kid in public schools, alarm bells are probably going off after hearing your story. 
Well, at this point, we don't know of any specific studies or analysis that has been done on whether or not teacher vacancies are actually impacting student performance. But remember, we don't have an apples to apples comparison. Florida, remember, uh, transitioned from their standardized testing last year. So they went from once a year standardized testing right. to now three times a year progress monitoring. But even in those tests, you do still see that just about eight, uh, half of Florida students are actually proficient by the end of their grade level. But keep in mind, I mean, I think advocates and leaders on both sides of the aisle are recognizing that this is a huge issue and it's only sustainable for so long and, and how it's in terms of and whether or not it's impacting students now or in the future. It's just it's eventually going to happen. I mean, keep in mind, you have 10,000 or so teachers that are also expected to start teaching in topics that they're not even certified to teach in. Well, because they're, they're just filling the vacancies? They're just finding bodies. And remember, we also have still a number of classrooms around the state that are being taught by full-time substitute teachers because they just don't have enough teachers. Well, not too long after your story, aired, it got the attention of a Sarasota County School Board member, uh, and, and he is calling for action. What is he suggesting that can realistically be done? Well, he specifically responded to our story about the exit surveys. He wants to see them in his own district. And so he brought that up in a recent school board meeting and then came to find out that very evening that they just started to track <laughs> teacher exit surveys because not everybody does it, okay. um, at least to a certain degree. Um, they, districts are required to ask teachers why they're leaving but they're often, the answers are very broad, they're right. very general, and there's not a lot of details. Well, I mean, in any job, point. when you do an exit interview, sometimes people just sort of play it safe, don't say much, and you know, all right. Uh, but it's not just about money. Uh, there are other things that are, uh, that these outgoing teachers are, are citing as the reason for leaving. It wasn't just about salary. I mean, they were talking about student behavior, the parents. Mm -hmm. uh, there's other things that are kind of shooting ourselves in the foot when it comes to keeping teachers. That's right. It's a host of issues. Certainly pay is at the top, um, you know, not feeling supported, but more so this year than what at least I heard anecdotally in previous years and most importantly the great resignation of 21-22 is now teachers are feeling unsafe in the classroom because they feel, as you pointed out, this out of control student behavior that's not being disciplined properly. Uh, real quick, you, you're, mm -hmm. you're continuing to follow through on this. Mm -hmm. what, what is next in this story? We actually heard from a teacher, an educator, I should say, who spent 15 years um, actually training teachers to get into the classroom, but then saw the writing on the wall, saw the deluge of teachers transitioning out, and now has actually founded a company. Her whole purpose is to help teachers transition, not just out of the job, but out of the industry. We'll be talking to her next week. Wow, that kind of tells you everything you need to know at this point. All right, Katie Legrone, thank you for your coverage. Appreciate it. And next on Full Circle Florida, Biden's BB dilemma. Is Netanyahu out of control? What can the president really do about it? We'll get into that next.